Minecraft is one of the most successful and influential video games of all time. And subsequently, Cake started a whole tidal wave of imitations and inspirations that aim to capture its magic, most of them failing. More importantly, it is often credited for popularizing the survival genre, creating a surge of games that attempted to put their own spin on the resource gathering and crafting formula. However, I find this interesting, because despite all its contributions to the genre, I always thought that Minecraft was honestly rather bad at being a survival game. Not even because it was limited for the time due to being one of the first, but just in general. In fact, I'd argue that the core identity of Minecraft and survival are inherently at odds with each other, and can never truly work together. To elaborate what I'm talking about, I want to take a look at what classifies as a survival game, which of these aspects Minecraft succeeds and fails at, and compare those to a more competent survival game of a similar type. And finally, I would like to suggest changes that could be made to bring it closer to the survival formula, and why it ultimately couldn't work even despite that. The most important aspect of survival games is that the player needs to, well, survive. Because of this, they usually have what I will call status requirements, such as health, hunger, thirst, stamina, and so on. All games have some form of these, but here they require constant upkeep. In order to save these needs, players need to collect resources. Since they are intentionally finite and or rare to come by, this is what I call scrounging for resources. And because not everything is available everywhere, the player has to explore the world to gather more of them. The world is divided into different environments, each of which require their own resources for surviving in them. For example, the player might freeze on a snowy mountain unless they're wearing warm clothes. Enemies serve as obstacles, requiring resources to beat, but also giving resources in return. Fighting them is not always the best option, since you might lose more than you gain. For some status requirements, the player may also need to craft certain items, because they're hard to find naturally. Crafting and upgrading weapons and tools is also necessary for defeating enemies and gathering more resources. Lastly, the player might even be required to build themselves a shelter, as protection against the elements and other dangers. There, they can even create farms to make harvesting certain items easier. The end goal of the game is usually to make survival as efficient and as easy as you can. Once you don't have to scrounge for resources anymore, it is quote-unquote won, and you can either stop or further the story by defeating certain bosses, if those exist. It's important to note that not every survival game fills all the requirements, and that even certain requirements don't automatically make any game a survival one. The focus, however, has to lie on these aspects and they have to be connected to the main gameplay loop. For example, adding a hunger meter to Super Mario 64 wouldn't make it a survival game, because the goal of the game is still to collect stars in order to win. In a similar vein, Pac-Man requires the player to try to stay alive for as long as possible while collecting resources and avoiding monsters, but the point of the game is more getting a high score. Got it? Good. So then, how are these aspects implemented into Minecraft? For status requirements, Minecraft has four. Health, Hunger, Stamina, and optional effects like poison, swiftness, and so on. Health is the most self-explanatory. Reach zero and you die. You can also increase it temporarily beyond its maximum limit via certain items, or wear armor to reduce the amount of health you lose when attacked. Hunger affects health as well, regenerating it when full and diminishing it when empty. Different foods saturate your hunger more and longer, with cooked food saturating the best overall. Optional effects can happen via potions, like turning invisible or breathing underwater, or via attacks, such as burning or getting poisoned. Stamina doesn't really exist, it's more of an invisible variable that I call as such for convenience. Basically, you are forced to eventually stop sprinting, and actions like mining, attacking, jumping and so on reduce your food meter. It's overall a very simplistic system, forgoing things like broken limbs or infections. Your max health also can't be increased or decreased permanently, and neither does hunger affect how fast you mine or how hard you attack. It's not necessarily bad because of its simplicity, however. It makes it easy to understand and even has other upsides. For instance, the lack of a quote-unquote true stamina system means you don't have to pause every few steps to catch your breath, instead making you hungrier directly. However, it also doesn't offer much strategy. Once you obtain a constant source of food, it's just a matter of eating now and then to replenish your health. Even what kind of food it is doesn't really make a difference, because you can keep vast amounts of it in your inventory. Gathering resources, however, isn't as simplistic, requiring several different kinds for different purposes. For example, mining coal to cook food at smelt iron, or chopping trees to get wood for crafting tools and building structures. 
Some resources like coal and iron are finite, with valuable resources like diamonds and emeralds being exceedingly rare. A good amount, however, are renewable via farms, like trees, crops and livestock. As the name suggests, the game focuses mostly on mining materials and caves to craft items with, with the player needing to explore more and more mines to find them. And it does this pretty well, considering it's quite literally part of the game's DNA. It is rather easy and efficient to create strip mines, however, which streamlines the entire process and discourages exploration. World exploration, however, isn't really required at all, unless the player is looking for specific items and materials like cocoa from jungles or fish from the ocean, or if they wish to trade with villagers. Either way, the overwhelming majority of things they might need are available in just about any biome. And this brings me to my next topic, where a very glaring problem emerges, which is that all the environments in the game are entirely cosmetic. No biome carries any special requirements for survival. You can't overheat in the desert, freeze to death in the snow, or get poisoned in the swamp. The only differences between them is that certain blocks or mobs are restricted to certain environments, as well as terrain changes between them. The weather is also marginally affected by the biome, with deserts seeing no weather at all and rain turning to snow in mountains. But since weather is also mostly purely cosmetic, this changes nothing. But almost all enemies can be encountered anywhere, and you can even build anything anywhere with no issue, like farming crops in the snow or even underground. The only exceptions to this are the nether and the end, neither of which are required for survival in any way and aren't even habitable either. So, no matter where you decide to live, whether it's in the forest, the ocean, the sky, or the bowels of the earth, you aren't really being hindered in any way except perhaps making navigation a bit more tedious. On to the enemies themselves. Combat itself isn't anything too special, but works well in its simplicity. Attacks are more powerful if you time them, with your sword even being able to do a sweep attack. Armor protects you against enemies better, with shields blocking almost all attacks entirely. Bows and crossbows help you engage enemies from afar, and you can even do critical hits by falling slash jumping while striking. Even potions can affect combat by applying buffs and debuffs. Now, the big problem arises when you realize that combat is entirely optional. Enemies are ridiculously easy to avoid, especially since your sprint is basically unlimited. Even aside from that, they often don't drop any items that are necessary for survival. Wither Skeletons, Enderman and Blazes do drop valuable items, but merely ones for optional story progression, if you can even call it that. But unless you live in a village or you come across enemies in a cave, there's no need to engage in any combat. But should you need to, this brings me to the second problem. Combat is entirely too easy, even on the hardest difficulty. Zombies and spiders are pushovers and can be defeated while standing completely still. Creepers pose more of a threat, but if you hit them away from you, they're never going to get close enough to explode. And even in the event of an explosion, your shield can protect you from it almost completely. Only skeletons can become a problem due to their good aim at a distance, but even that can be nullified if you use a shield or rush at them. The only actually dangerous enemies are special ones like pillagers, blazers, guardians and so on. But even in those instances, you have to go out of your way to encounter them, since they're so rare and restricted to certain areas. There's not even any reason to use ranged attacks for the most part, because charging at enemies with a sword and shield will work out in 9 out of 10 cases. There really isn't much to survive when you can just beat and avoid encounters so easily. Enemies don't even get hard in difficulty as you progress through the game either, nor are they really dependent on the biome you're in. So you're eventually going to reach a point where you simply outclass everything. On to the crafting and building. Like mentioned earlier, crafting is a part of Minecraft's identity, and for good reason. Basically everything you need has to be crafted, and you're even encouraged to build stronger and more durable tools out of scarce resources. Building also becomes second nature. It's incredibly fast, efficient, and most importantly, fun to build anything you want. And here comes another problem. It's completely unnecessary to build anything either. Now, hear me out. The only things you have to build are a bed, furnace, crafting table, and chests, as well as torches to keep a base safe from monsters. But the location and material of it literally doesn't matter. Different blocks aren't more or less sturdy against wind or weather, and enemies will never attempt to destroy your work either, maybe aside from zombies breaking down your doors. But there is no difference between a mansion, a hut, or a hole in the ground. As long as there's a single wall between you and any enemies, none will ever lay even a finger on you. Or bone. Or leg? Problem number two. Building is too easy, quick and efficient. Having an impenetrable fortress isn't the end of all video game balancing, but the fact you can build one out of dirt within less than a minute is. It even affects combat, which as I've pointed out is already entirely too easy. Just build a tall spire and nothing except arrows can reach you. 
So the only reason you have for building anything beyond a dirt house is if you really feel like it, not to keep you safe, which means it has absolutely nothing to do with survival. As I've shown, the end goal of not having to worry about surviving against all odds is reached absolutely too early. Finding necessary resources and building a base can be done within the first few in-game days, after which you have nothing else to do other than adding finishing touches. There is the alternative goal of slaying the Ender Dragon, but doing that doesn't really change anything either, since it spits you out right where you left off, leaving you with no reward, aside from experience for improving weapons and tools, to make killing enemies and obtaining resources even easier. Overall, survival in Minecraft feels more tacked on than a part of a core gameplay loop. It's no more a survival game than any Ubisoft open world title. It's a building game with survival elements. Nothing more, nothing less. Makes sense, because it originally began as what we now call creative mode. But what does a game look like that was built as a survival game from the start? One which also focuses on building, mining and combat, yet merges these aspects better with survival mechanics. Valheim is in many regards very similar to Minecraft. You get stranded in an open world and have to scavenge for resources, build a shelter and craft weapons to defeat hostile creatures. However, it's less simplistic, which immediately becomes apparent when looking at the status requirements. Valheim also has health, stamina, hunger and optional effects. But here, stamina has an actual meter that is reduced via running, jumping, attacking and basically any action you take. This time, however, Hunger is invisible, but still affects health and stamina in major ways. You start out with a pitiful amount of health and stamina, but can increase either with different types of food, each adding either onto your health or stamina. You can also only eat three types at once, which introduces strategy. Do you eat more meat to increase your health, or more veggies to increase your stamina? Stamina also recovers slowly, and health even slower, meaning you can't just stuff your face and be back to normal in no time. Optional effects aren't just inflicted via potions or attacks, but the environment. You can freeze in the snow and get wet in the rain, which influences your stamina and health regeneration. Your character even has strength, which influences how many resources they can carry. Important items are especially heavy and can't even be taken with you through teleporters, forcing you to take the long route and making them more valuable than they already are. So you can't always have all the materials you need with you here. Not to mention that resources are limited to certain regions. Iron can only be found in the swamp. Tin and copper only in forests, forcing the player to explore these environments if they want to stand a chance. And these environments have harsh requirements for survival. Mountains are freezing and it's always raining in the swamps, and neither biome spawn any animals for food, just enemies. It's even more difficult to create bases in sad regions due to the rough terrain. Enemies are also restricted to certain biomes, like Draugus in the swamp and freaking Deskidos in the plains. They even drop important resources when killed, which you'll need to craft into specific items, like turning wolf pelts into a fur cape to survive the cold. This means there's an actual reason for wanting to kill enemies over ignoring them. Which you might still want to do, however, because they hit hard and death is punishing, forcing you to walk through the same deadly environments after death to regain your items. Enemies even have vulnerabilities to certain weapons, like flying drakes being easier to kill with arrows, or the tree stump looking grey dwarfs being more susceptible to getting cut down with axes. Even special enemies can spawn, such as abominations or trolls, which are much harder to kill and can absolutely decimate your base. And not just reduce it by 10%, but completely destroy it too. So you'd want to avoid them, but they also drop crucial resources for important items. Bosses are also restricted to certain biomes, but once in the overworld, meaning you'd potentially have to fight them near important structures. But unlike the Ender Dragon, here they're part of the main quest, and even give you abilities when killed. Crafting works the same way as in Minecraft. However, items can only be crafted after obtaining the recipe by collecting the resources necessary for it, and some need you to upgrade your workbenches to higher levels first. This means you won't get the best gear within the first few days by staying exactly where you are, but only if you actually venture out into different environments. For example, to survive with the mountains, you have to get pelts from wolves. That spawn in the mountains. Building is also more restrictive. You can build amazing structures, but terraforming the land is a lot harder. You also can't be cranking 90s when fighting enemies and make a fortress within seconds, since you need to have a workbench nearby for that. Creating shelter is also absolutely necessary for survival, since it protects you from the elements. Beds also need a fire nearby to allow you to sleep, and workbenches can't be exposed either. Most importantly, however, enemies can and will attack your structures, forcing you to keep up a good defense around your base. There are even events during which hordes of enemies will rush your home. As for progression, 
My friend Alex and I are now around 55 hours into the game and we're still scrounging for resources and dying a bunch sometimes, especially when reaching new biomes. So while we've established a good basis to go off of, we're far from optimizing survival. Valheim is a game where the main gameplay loop and the survival aspects aren't just connected, survival is the core gameplay loop. You gather resources to defeat enemies, to get more resources to venture onward and defeat even more enemies. It really shows the effect that designing a game as a survival one from the start can have. You have less freedom in regards to crafting and building than in Minecraft, but that only strengthens the survival elements. It's also brutally hard at times, meaning you're forced to take your time and prepare accordingly. And even then, you might just bite the dust. So, what could be done in Minecraft to fix those issues? Well, it's a bit complicated. It's important that the simple nature of the game can't be touched, because that's one of its biggest strengths compared to other survival games. In that regard, adding features like a real stamina meter, thirst or lengthy building animations would just do more harm than good. Instead, I just modify what's already there. For instance, improving enemy behavior to be more dangerous. Instead of just walking at you, groups of zombies could attempt to flank you by having one half of them attack you from the front while the other half tries to get behind you. Creepers could perhaps run at you when they're about to explode instead of staying still, and endermen could teleport behind you instead of in front of you. Nothing personnel, kid. It would also already help a lot if specific enemies spawned in certain biomes, like creepers hiding among jungle leaves or spiders making their home in trees in the swamp. And something like pillager raids but for player bases would be interesting as well. Most importantly, however, would be to incorporate building into the survival aspect, giving players a reason to create certain structures, especially out of stronger materials. How? By making enemies be able to destroy blocks themselves. Right now, zombies only break down doors, but what if they did the same to other blocks like wood and stone and such? Each of them would take longer to destroy, but will still force you to engage with the enemy to stop it. Like I mentioned in my One Perfect Enemy video about creepers, endermen could also take your house apart, gaining entry into your base for other enemies. Similarly, creepers could explode as long as there's a wall between them and you, even if they can't physically see you. Overall, this would mean that there's an actual reason for building a stone house over a dirt one. However, this is where a big problem appears, namely that it would limit creativity severely. Why build a castle if a giant stone cube with no windows or doors is more efficient? What's the point of even decorating a base at all if it's just going to be destroyed? Just digging into the ground and plugging up the hole is too easy and efficient, even if enemies are stronger and more aggressive. You could even live in an open field as long as you place enough torches everywhere. And this still wouldn't address the issue of biomes being more cosmetic than anything. If certain environments have specific requirements and dangers, why live there to begin with if you can find everything you need anywhere? The biggest problem however is that Minecraft is all about player freedom, about creating whatever you want, whenever you want. But survival games are about limiting player freedom, forcing them to get by with what they have. Restricting the player would aid survival, but remove what the game is about. But not doing anything makes survival pointless, because it's too easy to circumvent. So these two concepts really can't be married with each other in this game. Unless Mojang designed a Minecraft sequel from the ground up as a survival game, it will always just be a building game with survival elements. Not even mods can really help with that, because they are still limited by the core game structure themselves. I wish there were another way, but I honestly can't see one. However, that's not the end of the world. If you want a game where you can create incredible constructions while also having to worry about surviving in a cruel world, I'd recommend Valheim. It's wonderful for playing with friends too. They have- Oh, that's so unfair! Ride my valiant steed! Away with ye! It took a whole day, but we're finally rid of all that cheating stuff. After all, no game has a monopoly on every feature, so where one fails, another can take over. And that's fine. That concludes this video. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Maybe you can think of a way to improve survival after all? Or maybe you don't even think it's broken. Please write it down in the comments below. I always try to read as many of them as I can. And if you're interested, you can also take a look at that One Perfect Enemy video I did on the Creeper. Or this video, which is about finding purpose in Minecraft's Infinity. But for now, thank you very much for watching, have a wonderful day, and goodbye.